Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Microsoft have announced that support for Windows 10 will end after October 14th, 2025. So if you have a PC running Windows 10, you will need to take steps to ensure that it stays secure and works as it should. Now Windows versions coming to the end of support is nothing new. We've dealt with this since the days of Windows 3.1, then Windows 95, then XP and so on. We had the same discussion when Windows 7 reached its end of support date and we'll have the same again when Windows 11 one day does so. So this is a never ending cycle. Let's start by explaining what end of support or end of life as it's sometimes called actually means. So after the end of support date, your PC that runs Windows 11 or Windows 10 or any other version of Windows that goes past its support date for that matter will not receive any security updates. As time passes, vulnerabilities or exploits will be discovered in these operating systems as well as other software that runs on them. These exploits can allow hackers or people who should not normally have access to your PC to access your files and folders and even potentially remotely watch what you're doing. This could leave them getting access to your bank account, stealing your identity and engaging in other nefarious activities. If it's a work PC, they could steal client data hold the company to ransom, and then risk getting fines and penalties from the government. They could also remote control your computer and use it for criminal purposes. An example of this was the WannaCry ransom attack in June 2017, which infected computers running Windows XP, which was already at the end of support at that time. Users running more recent versions of Windows that failed to keep up to date with Microsoft security updates were also affected. This usually resulted in the end user losing all their data unless it was backed up and the computer became unusable. This hit the NHS. Despite NHS computers having antivirus software installed, the NHS is the healthcare system in the UK for those that are outside of the UK. You may also lose access to Microsoft technical support, but as a home user, I've never actually rung Microsoft up apart from the annoying Windows activation by phone in the early days. Other companies that provide software and support may also end support for their own products on Windows 10. In my experience, this tends to occur more slowly and software such as antivirus and web browsers continue to support end of support operating systems for an extended period of time. Updates for hardware, such as graphic and sound cards, would also depend on the manufacturer continuing to support old hardware. Unofficial updates have been available perhaps created by the community, but these would unlikely be accepted in any critical or corporate environment. So what are your options, um, whether you're a home user or a user in a home office environment? Well, one option being touted is to do nothing and continue using Windows 10. I personally would not recommend this. As the WannaCry episode showed, unpatched exploits can compromise your PC, sometimes without you even knowing. Disconnecting your PC from the internet can reduce this risk, but none of your other apps will get updates and you won't be able to use uh, any email or any other software that uses the cloud. It doesn't prevent your PC from being, getting infected using other vectors, such as USB sticks or even Bluetooth. As time goes on, newer software versions may be released, which eventually no longer run on Windows 10. This is more critical now as software is being released on a subscription which may force you to upgrade that software to the latest version to carry on using it. So I would say doing nothing and staying on Windows 10 is not an option that I would go down. Another option touted is to enhance your security measures, such as installing reputable antivirus and firewall software, keeping your applications, especially those that connect to your internet up to date, and practicing safe browsing habits to mitigate your security risks. Whilst I would say you would do all these anyway, and these all help, an exploit in the operating system itself puts your data and cybersecurity at risk, making your system vulnerable. However, you say if you try to be. So I would not go down this option unless it was for a very short interim period. The longer you use an unsupported operating system, the greater the risk of more exploits being discovered and used against you. You could upgrade your computer from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Microsoft may be incentivizing you to do this by offering the upgrade free of charge and making it as easy as possible through an option in Windows 10. However, 
Windows 11 has more modern hardware requirements than Windows 10, including more stringent security requirements for your PC's hardware. Microsoft does provide an option to check whether you meet the requirements for Windows 11 before you decide to upgrade. There are various fixes uh, existing on the internet to help you get around some of these, but this sometimes involves modifying system files, which is not the friendliest or risk-free approach. You also run the risk of Microsoft closing any such loopholes at any time. You will also need to check whether any software you already use is compatible with Windows 11. If your software is not recent, the provider may ask you to upgrade to a more up-to-date version compatible with Windows 11 or not provide any update at all, perhaps resulting in you needing to find an alternative supplier for your needs. There may be no update path if you use dedicated software for work, for example in a medical facility. Upgrading to the latest version of any external software may result in having to pay for a new license. So upgrading to Windows 11 may be viable, depending on what hardware and software you have installed at the moment. Now Microsoft may allow you to pay for security updates for a period beyond the end of support date for your Windows version. These costs usually increase rapidly year by year and are per PC. I have known large organizations and corporations to actually take this option, but I haven't known any personal home users to go down this route. As a home user, I would not bother with this option and use any funds that I've got for hardware upgrades. And speaking of hardware, Another option is to upgrade your hardware. This is the option I've personally been using for years and years in the past. Since the late 90s and 2000s, my PC was primarily used for gaming. So at that time, I would upgrade the RAM, um, perhaps upgrade the graphics card, and eventually I remember buying a 3DFX 3D accelerator card and even a CD writer at some point. After some initial updates of the hardware, I simply transitioned to buying a new PC every few years if I could afford it. I usually kept my monitor, keyboard and mouse unless it was imperative that I needed to change it. Upgrading to the latest PC can cost thousands of pounds depending on your needs. The new PC may come with the latest version of Windows and support new technology such as faster USB ports. You will also need to invest time in moving your data across. You might be able to sell your old PC providing you can remove your data securely from it, or it may have to be recycled as e-waste. There is a market for retro hardware, but it may be a while before any recent computer becomes vintage. In summary, you may be able to upgrade your hardware to get a new PC that is compatible with Windows 11. Well, how about switching to an alternative operating system? Another option given is to switch to Linux. For me at least, this is out of the question. I could make a whole video about why I personally would not switch to Linux from Windows 10. The positive is that Linux operating systems are usually free, with various distributions tailored to different needs. For example, some versions are designed for education and cybersecurity testing. Although the operating system itself may be free, support is usually chargeable, unless you see cancers using the community using forums. Linux has a steep learning curve. Some operations are still done using the command prompt. For the end user, the command prompt is too dated. Users are used to point and click with simplicity and ease of use. Straightforward tasks in Windows may require the user to learn new commands or use different software on Linux. Installing software may not be as simple as clicking an icon. Software compatibility may be a major problem, especially if you're using a specialized Windows software. Some workarounds for these problems may exist. Using software such as emulation, compatibility layers and virtual machines However, this is just adding more software on top of software that can go wrong and your emulation and virtual machine software may not be free. Linux versions of popular software such as video editing and graphic design may simply not be available. You may also come across some hardware such as printers and scanners having limited or no support from the official manufacturer for Linux. You might have to rely on the community or third party drivers which can again can cause cybersecurity risks. So what about upgrading to macOS? Depending on what you use your system for, this could be a potential option. Many commercial software programs available for Windows are now available for macOS. In addition, I found that macOS software tends to be less prone to crashes and often works well on older Macs with fewer performance issues. You'll see users using 10 year old Macs with up-to-date software running reasonably well. Mac OS is known for its clear 
intuitive and consistent user interface, which many users find easier to navigate, especially when they're performing creative tasks. If you have an iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch or other iOS device, you can integrate them with your Mac, allowing you to share the clipboard and files across them easily using features like AirDrop. Mac OS is generally considered more secure against viruses and malware than Windows. The downside is that Macs are usually more expensive than their Windows counterparts. Some software, particularly games, may not have a Mac OS native version and modern Macs may have very limited upgrade options compared to Windows computers once you purchase them. Macs can be very expensive to repair if they are out of warranty. Mac OS versions will also eventually go to end of support but you are more likely to be able to use older software for longer. So in terms of switching to an alternative operating system, I personally would not go down the Linux route, but I would consider Mac OS if I had the money and my software was compatible. So what's the conclusion to all this? You have to do what's right for you. Initially in my computer journey, starting with Windows 3.11, I briefly upgraded the hardware to help it work better in future versions. The focus at the time was not just work, but also gaming. As you got more resources, you could upgrade the whole PC after a few years, usually when the warranties run out. I actually did this all the way up to Windows 7. By then, I had an iPhone and played games less, and I used my computer for work and productivity more. Gaming moved over to the PlayStation, I briefly kept a Windows PC and a Mac before eventually buying a MacBook Pro for all my needs. I replace this every few years, especially when any Apple Care or any warranty runs out. And yes, I have actually claimed on the warranty, so even these computers are not infallible. The other positive thing I can say is I can usually get a good sum of money for my old Mac, which I used towards the purchase of a newer model. At work, you are reliant on your employer who may well wait right till the last day of support for the Windows version before upgrading the PC or buying a new one. The upgraded hardware could usually be the minimum specification they can get away with and you may not have any say in the process. I hope you have found this video useful. In the comments, let me know what you will do when Windows 10 goes out of date. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.